Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. Excited to have our next guest joining us here, the founder of Down and Out Consulting. Tasha Clock joining us here, our mentor and our coach to really help us with personal growth, financial, career goals. She does it all. Welcome to the show. How are you? Very excited to be here. How are you doing? Great. I'm so excited to have you and great I could hear and see you. <laughs> My fellow New Yorker, she hails from the Bronx. And uh, tell us just a little bit overview about your company. So my company is all about finding your next step. The idea came to me when I was in between jobs during COVID. I recently just graduated from school. I had my first job and I was just like um, smiling cheek to cheek because I had my first official offer. So things were going great. I was working there for a month full time and I got my first check. So I celebrated a lot from that first one. Then all of a sudden COVID hit and then I was laid off oh. and I had no where to go. I just got my associate. So I went back into school to get my bachelor's, but I was stuck. I was down and out. I wanted a way to get out of that mindset. I wanted to move beyond where I was and go to the next chapter of my life. So that's how the idea of the company came about. So I found the biggest barriers for people were financial. It was personal growth. It was just generally trying something new and seeing if it fits. So I modeled the idea of down and out against those obstacles, essentially. And hence the name of the company, Down and Out. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, well, thank you for sharing that story. And here you are. When did you start the company? Um. I believe it was around 2017, a while okay. back. It hasn't officially been funded, but the idea and the hopes are all still there. Great. But well, tell us how back. we can reach out to you, by the way. You can reach out to me via Instagram. I have an Instagram page called consults underscore anonymous, and I have an email down and out info at gmail.com. You can reach me either way. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much. Pleasure having you here. And we're going to talk today about personal development, staying consistent, maintaining lifestyle changes as well. And I know you mentioned, you know, you always had a, you know, a knack for connecting with people. And uh, here you are today helping so many. So before this, what were you doing? Uh, Just curious, if you don't mind, you got that associate degree. And then you said you were, it was an insurance it was insurance. It was not a great fit. It was very, very technical and very um, detailed. It was not a natural fit. I did try, but it was not where I was supposed to be. So currently I work in the financial market. I work in technology under cybersecurity, which is a lot of words. I work at a tech firm that does finance. And I do none of those. I just do cybersecurity for that um, established sector. Amazing. So I work in a lot of yeah a lot of technical spaces well it's been a while since we've spoken and um is there you know let's talk a little bit about some of the work that you've been doing currently i mean i know you offer it correct me if i'm wrong it was an initial consultation if someone's interested in your work right Uh, to work with you it's an initial consultation so we just have a discovery session we figure out if we're synced if we have the same goals if i can help you and if not i'll try to help you the best i could and then we can just leave it there but there's no commitment it's just a feel for both of us and then we go from there and you are rated one of the best personal coaches in the bronx but you're not just working <laughs> with people in the bronx right you are nationwide yeah i hope to expand to that part but we are in the bronx we're looking for other clients but whatever comes to me is what i accept but for right now it's only within new york city Great. Well, let's ask about personal coaching. Why should someone get a personal coach? Let's start there. I think because we all need help in life. Like Mm -hmm. we get as far as we can, but it doesn't hurt to have an outside perspective. Someone who might have been the same route you're trying to go and get established in. Mm -hmm. Like am I myself, I have a bunch of mentors. I have mentors for finance. I Ah. have mentors for work. I have mentors for speaking because I'm very introverted. So just speaking up more, being more social, being more proactive in how I speak to people. But it helps us expand from one person to different personalities. It's, it's pretty, it's fundamental in my opinion. Great. And what are some of the things people are coming to you for to excel in their personal life with? Would you mind giving us some examples of, you know, is it finding the right career? Is it um, personal growth? Yeah, I would love to hear more. It's usually personal growth that starts off as that. And then we get into what's really bothering them. It's either... They're the first in their family to do all the stuff they're doing now. So there's no model to follow mm-hmm. after. It's imposter syndrome. Do I deserve to be here? Was I just playing a role? Am I the actual person that deserves this role? There's the finances. How can I maintain my stability? Things of that sort. But it usually starts off with 
how can I get to the next level of where I want to be? Now, speaking of finances, um, what uh, advice would you give someone, you know, starting out? Like, I wish, um, I'm 46, but my mother, my father never sat down with me to give me those financial skills. You know, it was, okay, you're 18, you can open up a credit card. Oh, okay. And oh, then I have a student loan. Oh, okay. No one ever yeah. told me like, well, you got to pay back and how much more it's going to cost you. No one ever set those goals and boundaries in my life. So I struggled when I was in my twenties with that concept of uh, finances. I didn't know how to save. I didn't know how to plan for a 401k. So what do you tell your clients about the importance of financial stability? And what are some tips you can give to some of our listeners out there? That finance is very fundamental. To me, it's a very big part of your survival. If there's no finance, there's a, you have to do, you're in a situation where you're in a rock and a hard place and there's no convenient choice for you. So it's, it depends on the person. Like one client I did have, they were just starting off in their career. So they had some debts. They wanted to have a savings. So I mentioned that maybe you can just save like maybe $10 as a starter. And whatever the company offers as a matching, if it's a 7%, do it a minimum in the meantime. So you get that match in the meantime and you're building your equity while you're paying off your debt. If you're not in a space to invest, you can save. If you're not in a space to save, just do as much as you can and make sure you cover all the required payments at a minimum. And once we get to a comfortable place, we move from just bills to savings and then from savings to investing. But we just, we make a plan based on where you are. But I'd say just to save as much as you can for a rainy day. You know that six months because I know it's a, it's a it's a reach for a lot. Of what is it? Yeah. What what are we supposed to have saved? Yeah. Could you sh share that? What's that? Yeah. So typically, I encourage people if they if they're in a place where they can save to save up at least six months, three to six months of their monthly expenses. So if anything happens, if you're in between jobs, some disaster hits, you have something to keep you going on in the meantime. You don't have to go use your credit card and just go into debt trying to recover from something that was not planned. But if it's not possible, just start. Just having something as a starting point is where you want to be. It builds up over time. You can get a high yield savings account and make interest while you're just putting in your $10. And that's helping you build to your future. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It keeps going. So as long as you get in the game, it's where you want to be. Ah, I got to have skin in it to win it, though, of course, right? Yeah. Well, a lot of common mistakes. I think people are, you know, children are living, teenagers that I know in my neighborhood are working, but they're spending their money now like Uber Eats. They're going, they're yeah. spending all their money. I'm like, don't you guys say? She's like, no, she's she's 17. She's my neighbor. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? She's like, well, you know, her mom's letting her drive a car. She has no car expense. Oh, we're going to Target. She took my kids out for ice cream the other day and I, and I gave her money. I said, but you guys are going out all the time. Like, where are you getting like, you know, I just use my money. I'm like, you don't save? She's like, no. Like, and I'm like, okay, well, we, we need to change the, the course of these younger generations to learn the importance of savings. I mean, and I find like a lot of our youth are living with our, you know, with their uh, parents older, which helps you yeah. save money for that, um, you know, home. But at the same time, they're not saving money for the home. They're spending it because they have the extra money. It's just like... Wow, it's a plethora of a, a downfall here, um, you know, with finances for, for youngins. What other advice would you give to people? I would say that, like, it's good to live for now and to enjoy life and all that comes with it. But it's also good to plan for the future. Because it sounds like she's in a place where she just wants to enjoy everything. She wants to go to the movie. She wants to get the clothes. She wants to have the food. But it sounds like there's not a, a consideration for if something happens tomorrow and you're just there, what are you going to do then? Because all the expenses that are being covered by your family, you'd have to take on that role at that point. So just to kind of balance it out and have fun. Don't just cut everything off, but do a little balance. Like save maybe $20 every week or so, every income that you have coming in, just so you have something to pocket, but just balance it out. Well, I like some of the banks that I have, they, they have these things called bucket lists now. You could put like $10 towards like a Christmas savings. You could put yeah. $10 towards a travel. Like, I like that. I like that. And which every time you check in, you can see you're ten percent here, you're fifteen. I have that as well. It's very help. It's motivating for me. It I see is. My bar go closer to one hundred each time. It really is. All right. So down and out consulting. Uh, joining us today, we're talking about you know how you want to achieve your goals, whether it's your career, finances. What other things are you helping people with today? Just personal goals. Something that I'm personally working on right now is my wellness journey to tone. Ooh. I think since the year started, I've lost about 40 pounds, but it's a very God bless. tough topic because it's a lot of discipline. It's a lot of changes, but wow. Yeah. So like, congrats. What stuff, have you, what have you been doing? 
I've been walking a lot. Like I love to walk. So I'll okay. walk more, I'll drink more water, I'll get my sleep in. Because it, it's everything that ties into the, it's not just restricting your diet. It's a lot of things. You don't have to restrict it. You just have to be smart about it. Yeah. But it's been something that's been saving me. And it's good for my mental health to just like have that clear. I can think about what I'm going to do next, what's bothering me. And I just come back anew. A new you. All right. At this time, remind us how we can contact you again. So you can contact me on my Instagram page, consults underscore anonymous, or you can reach me at down.info at gmail.com. Awesome. And by the way, um, offering uh, some professional support, if you go to the website, you can check her out there on some great reviews as well. Could you share some of your client testimonials, some of the stories of some of the clients you've helped specifically, what you've helped them gain, the new knowledge, what they're saying about you, working with you, and why we should reach out to you? Yeah, well, I don't have any official testimonies, but they tell me personally, I don't have the website yet to document all of the testimonials, but the most recent one was I have some um, interns that I work with and I help them get adjusted to the corporate lifestyle versus like being a college kid, mm. that giant switch from, you're now an adult, you're now accountable for work, you now have to do your year-end reviews and all the evaluations, but I help them to battle their imposter syndrome and they feel more firm in who they are they feel more ready and prepared to take on the challenge and they, they earn the spot that they're in now but I feel like from what I understand I help them feel like they're in control yeah. and that they're deserving of where they are well see well I found a website I thought this was yours it is you uh Nia Topsy wrote in 2021 thanks for helping me uh Zelma Tani says just perfect cannot recommend you enough um I don't know if it's an old website but um it's connected to you and it's your beautiful picture <laughs> okay I'll look into that. That's down, it's down, um, dash and dash out consulting dot u e n i w e b dot com. Is that old? It might be an old website. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, it's old, but it's you. You're the, <laughs> see, oh, it says best personal coaching in the Bronx. See, see. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, um, let me ask, you know, you know, as a coach, what is the commitment and accountability piece? How long does someone need to work with you for? It depends on the person, but it's very targeted. Like I, whatever you need, if like, I'm going to ask you your first session, what are you looking for and how do you want to reach that goal? Then based on that, we'll make a plan. Typically, I think for me, it's about six sessions because we're very intentional when we speak. I want to know exactly what's bothering you, what's the root of it and how we can fix that and then move on to our next step. But it shouldn't take too long as long as you're willing to work with me and you come in with a part of what you want to fix in our journey together. And you're meeting how often? Virtually, but I believe bi-weekly for now. It fluctuates, but mainly bi-weekly. Okay. And then how long are each is each session? Usually an hour. Got it. But really, a lot of the work is that accountability. It lays on the person, right, who has to, you know, commit to what they're doing and to achieve their goal. There's a pattern. There's a plan. And we have to just make sure that you stick with it. What else did you want to share about your personal coaching? I would say that the biggest blocker I've noticed is just people trying something new. I know change is very scary. I, tr I struggle with that myself sometimes, but embracing mm -hmm. new. I know a lot of clients cling to old patterns because that's what they know. They know what to expect, what happens at every point of that cycle. But doing something new is it's a refresher. But I would say just um, embracing the new, trying out what the new versions of yourself could be. You don't have to be the same person every day. You can be, you can expand, you can regress, you can do whatever fits for that day and go forward with that. But change is not something to avoid. It's very inevitable and it, it usually is transformative for us. Mm, you see, I love hearing this stuff. Now also, um, you're, are you on Facebook as well? I am. Perfect. And, and how do I find you on Facebook? Uh, same thing, Domino Consultant. Awesome, awesome. I'm more active on Instagram, but I do have Facebook as well, yes. I know, it's social media. I mean, people. how are people working? Do you coach people how to stay off of social media? Because the other thing, I'm looking at the younger generation, how are they working when they're so attached to their phones? My goodness. You know, on social media, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, I think, um, adaptability there as well. A lot of my clients prefer virtual. That they'd rather meet over a Zoom call where it's just they can do whatever they're doing and I could just be in the background or I can just be there when they need me to be. It's a lot more convenient. So it is an advantage as well sometimes, but it's also very um, limited when I can't have that in person. Like I can't really react to how you're doing because it's all behind a screen and the cameras might not be on sometimes. Yeah. But, Got yeah. it. Got it. 
All right, Tasha Clock joining us down in Al Consulting. And you mentioned, um, you know, the importance of connecting with people and helping people. And uh, I know you mentioned you have mentors in different areas. Are you mentoring anyone right now? I'm mentoring a few people right now. I think just one person. It's very, like, you, like, I feel like there's a bias that mentors are the ones that are teaching, but usually it's vice versa. It's, it's both. We learn from each other. You teach me, I teach you, and we both expand at the end of it. But yeah, she's my, my mentor as well in some categories. Yay. Well, what else do you want us to know about the coaching process? Because now you've been doing this for a few years. Um, this started, you mentioned 2017. Can I just ask what happened in, was it 17? Uh, 19? I'm sorry. When, when COVID came, how did that affect things? I mean, uh, I'm assuming a lot of people were down and out, including us all. How did that affect you and your company? And did you see a certain influx of different clients coming in after the pandemic? Yeah, I think a lot of the clients did come during it. They wanted someone to talk to. I had a lot of discovery calls about just like um, how they felt, where they wanted to go and how they were stuck in a current moment and not a lot of follow-ups after. And I think after COVID, it got more intentional. Like certain clients were able to make a significant change did come to me more and they stayed the whole pattern and not just the initial discovery. But I think COVID did kind of get us to think because we're like usually when we have problems, we can go to work and we can go to the games, the parties, the clubs and come back. But in COVID, we're stuck there. We're just in this spot every day for two years. So wow. I think that did hit a lot of spots and make them, I want to do something different. I want to have a different reality. Wow. Well, because, you know, I feel like a lot of people had to swivel to adjust, to pivot. Um, you know, your old job was no longer there, right? A lot of people got fired, got taken away. We did virtual. We did. It was just like chaos. And a lot of people had to now discover new hidden talents, develop a new career, a new job. So I'm assuming you had to help people with that, right? How did you help someone guide them to, if they were working in one industry to another? You know, that's got to be a scary change. It definitely is. We did a lot of research. We researched the roles, what transferable skills that we're looking for and how we can get them there through certifications, through just general studies um, and courses. But we did a lot of research on what the necessary skills are for entry level in that role. And then we applied that in our training. So we looked up, if you're doing tech, we looked up different degrees, different languages. And then we used that to help boost their skills for the interview. Wow. Well, yeah, it's got to be a hard thing to pivot like that, to change careers. But people did it. You know, people do it, I should say. And it can happen, you know, to you. And, you know, as what is your availability? Do you work on the weekends? Do you work at nights to, to or around the clock for people? I work on the afternoons, usually four to six, Monday to Thursday. And I work Saturdays, 12 to four. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what do you find most challenging? Do you have a story with one of your clients where you, maybe it was hard for them to overcome what it was and it took a while? Something that we can learn from here today? Well, I had a client that initially came to me. We didn't get to finish the whole um, series, but they came to me mm -hmm. looking for the right career. They weren't sure what skills they excelled at, which careers made sense for them. because They were very introverted. They had a very unique um need when it came to the role and i did look up a few things i looked up careers different paths they can take i'm kind of suggested take an internship to kind of just feel what makes sense to you mm -hmm. we didn't get to um finish it up ultimately but they did look into what i did and i do i did get an email saying that they did find the right career i'm not sure exactly what part of the process got them there but we did do a giant discovery on what they need to do yeah but that was the biggest um challenge for us so okay. it was such a wide there's a lot of careers out there and there's so little that we can really go to, the, to what we want. Now, Tasha, do you have a coach as well or can you coach yourself? Uh, I think I, I have a coach. I think people who coach themselves, there's a little bit of uh, denial there because you're only as best as your teacher. And if you're the one trying to get better and you're the person that's helping you get there, you need someone that's beyond where you are to get you to your next level. But I do have a coach. I have See. lots of them. And some people have personal coaches, financial coaches, like specifics, but you are like a one-stop shop because you do it all. <laughs> Is there anything that you don't coach for or coach with, I should say? I'd say relationship. That's a new level of, there's a lot of um, instances and like there's a lot of details there that it's, it's a lot, it's very hard to maneuver through. 
I know. I'm like, well, I can't even have a normal relationship. How would I ever coach someone? That's what I would think for me. <laughs> I don't know about you personally. I'm just joking. <laughs> oh, but it feels good to be helping people. And it's amazing. You made a whole career out of this. And it, it's exciting because this is a, something that everybody could use. Excellent, you know, support and also, you know, working through, um, you know, trying to reach that full potential because life is too short, right? Why not, you know, live the life that you want to live? Absolutely. And has there ever been a time where you tried coaching someone to believe in themselves and it was a little difficult? You know, what, what usually holds people back from changing, sh shall I say, or their making that about making that adjustment? Say it again. I'd say their beliefs about themselves. They've okay. accepted certain things. Like they've, they've listened to <clears throat> noise. Like usually when you try and push past your circumstances, a lot of people will try and tell you, no, just stay where we are. How, how can you get there? But I can't. So you ignore, you silence them, but after a while you realize that their words got into you, internalize them. And there's this concept of self-rejection where before the world tells you, no, you stop yourself from even trying. So a lot of it was them working through how they felt about themselves. What's making them feel like that? If it's, um, they don't, but they know enough. We'll learn, we'll learn about different skills in their career. Like if you want to get better at technology, we can learn about the different languages, the different certifications you can pursue to put yourself that you do know what you need to fulfill that role. But it's many of the personal belief that they have coming into the role that we had to work on and adjust to. Amazing. Amazing. All right. Well, we still have just two minutes left in the show. Unfortunately, it's a little shorter today. I know we had got off to a rocky start. What else do you want to make sure uh, we leave off for our listeners today? I would just say it's a beautiful day to try something new. There's always the possibility of tomorrow. It could be whatever you want it to be, or it could be a worse nightmare. It's up to you how you want it to, but it's going to come. You might as well prepare for it. You know, just make it easier for you later on by doing a sacrifice today to get there tomorrow. Oh, I love hearing that. It's so true. And it, it's, you know, it's your life should be, and I feel since the pandemic, anything you want it to be, you realize how precious life is and might as well live your best life. And even if you change careers, go back to school, you know, things sometimes happen later in life for certain people. And I'm sure a lot of people get, you know, discouraged in a sense. Yeah with their situation. So if someone out there listening today, any tips or advice on what they should be doing on a daily basis? Could you want to leave us off with some positive wisdom? I would say just um, tap into your curiosity if you have an interest in like, if you notice you like painting more, if you like going on walks, if you like reading, tap into it and see what the other version of you could be. Just kind of tap into what catches your attention and see how it can develop for you. It could be a new hobby. It could be a new career. It could be a new side hustle you never know what it could do for you but just try and be open to opportunities as they come to you oh well thank you so much and how can we reach out to you one more time tell us that instagram page and facebook page you can find me on instagram at consults underscore anonymous facebook is down the consultant you can email me at down the info at gmail.com perfect thank you so much for being here for being so honest and open with us and to help other people make their, you know, their lives happen, change happen, and it's possible. So uh, thank you so much. And uh, hopefully we'll speak again soon. Enjoy the beautiful day today. You too. Thank you. Thank you. And to all of our listeners, please stay tuned. More of the show is coming right up after the break. Have a fantastic day. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. 
Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.